Okay, we are back in Delaware. We are back to a new week and we have new shoes to try on today. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Like I said, we have new shoes to try today. And uh, yeah, we're going with the Hoka lineup again. And we are trying out the new, relatively new, Hoka Ona Ona Rincon. I think that's how you say it. Anyway, it has something to do with surfing. They're really light and uh, it's supposed to be really awesome. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the shoes real quick. Go for a short run and I'll give my first impressions of the shoes. And then as I do with all my shoe reviews, after about 50 miles of running, we'll do an in-depth review of the shoes. So, today we are starting with the Hoka Ona Ona Rincon, and here they are right here. Ooh, check them out. You can actually see, you can see right through them actually with the sun. Anyway, some of the specifications of these shoes, some of the details is uh, they're super light, they're super soft, and super awesome. That's it. Now, let's get into the real details. So, as typical with the uh, Hoka Ona Ona shoes, they have this huge stack height. They have a five millimeter drop or offset heel to toe. So the heel is at 31 millimeters and the toe is at 26 millimeters. So it's a big stack height, five millimeter offset or heel to toe drop. They are, with the, even with the, the thickness of the sole, these are super light, seven and a half ounces in a men's size nine. I'll tell you, I'll put the, what the conversion is to, uh, to ounces, to um, grams, but seven and a half ounces, men's size nine. Check that out. And uh, there's a typical Hoka Ono shoes, like I mentioned, they have the, the Meta Riser, so there's a rocker uh, design to them, so they help with the transition from heel to toe if you're a heel to toe striker. Let's start with the bottoms and go to the tops. Bottoms have the the EVA foam and exposed foam, except for a couple strategic areas where they have uh, rubber to help with the durability of the shoe. Has a really nice midsole to it. There's an, these are for neutral runners, so there is no support for these shoes. Uh, there's like no arch bridge or anything like that. That's typical for most Hoka Ona Ona shoes. Uh, but where the lightness comes in is this upper. This upper is super light, super thin, super breathable, super see-through. If I could show you that, look at that. You actually see through the shoe. Super breathable. It's got a mesh that helps with um, the fit, so it gives a more universal fit for most feet types. Uh, the tongue has a more, a little more padded tongue than a lot of other Hoka shoes have, so they don't have a paper thin tongue to it. I'll show you what the tongue looks like. So that's the tongue. And the, uh, like I said, the upper is super light, super thin, super breathable. And uh, yeah, they come in a lot of different colors. And uh, I'll try, try to show different colors uh, on these as well. Uh, so that's about it. It's a, uh, yeah, new shoe to run in, new training shoe. Uh, these aren't like a racing type shoe, but maybe, it depends who you are. Uh, maybe do for long runs, maybe some speed work, we'll find out. We're gonna do, everything in these shoes. We're gonna do track workouts in these shoes. We're gonna do uh, tempo runs, we're gonna do long runs. Uh, yeah, we might even race in these shoes, who knows? Anyway, this is the Hoka Ona Ona Rincon and uh, it's time to put them on, check them out, go for a run. A couple of things I wanted to point out of these shoes. One thing that stuck out that I really liked and noticed was the heel loop here on the end. That's great if you're a triathlete or have trouble putting your shoes on. Uh, help with getting them on uh, for triathletes. That's a great thing to have. Also, this is a seamless upper. So again, if you're a triathlete and you don't wear socks most of the time when you're running because you waste time, this is uh, might be helpful to you. So uh, big, huge loop. I love this. You can actually get a couple fingers fingers in here. It's uh, yeah, pretty nice. The other thing I want to point out is with the insole. Uh, most insoles are a sock liner insole that's removable. I want to point out here what's going on with this insole. It is not removable, or not easily removable, and it's very, very thin. It's 
So the insole is glued in. I think you might be able to remove it, but it is glued in and it is very thin. Uh, so if you wear orthotics, you may have to uh, worry about where you're wearing orthotics with these shoes. But I think the insole can be removed. It's just there's a light glue holding them in and they are paper thin and offer no structure. These are meant for neutral and uh, runners that don't need a whole lot of support. Anyway, let's get these things on. Let's go for a run. today nice four easy miles in the new hoka on a, on a ring con and uh give my impressions in a second here but uh yeah coming back from vacation feeling a little bit heavy we're going to talk about uh doing some running for weight loss because uh i'm in that category now anyway these shoes i was thinking about them when i was running and how they made them so light like i said these are Regular training shoes, they're seven and a half ounces. They have a huge stack height that like most Hoka's have. Uh, 21, no, 31 millimeter stack height in the back, 26 in the front. Gives it a five millimeter offset or heel to toe drop. Sorry, I'm sweating in my eyes. But uh, one thing I noticed at that bottom was the upper is very light, which is good. It's breathable, it's light, it's nice. It's good on these hot, humid days. Uh, one thing that they did cheap out on, they cut a corner on to make it lighter, is the insole, as I mentioned before. It has a really thin, flimsy insole that's partially glued in. It looks like you can remove it and put your own, own insole in there. Most of the insoles that Hoka provides and anybody else it has a nice contour to it. It's a little bit thicker, adds a little bit more cushion, adds a little bit more weight too. So they cheaped out on that. But uh, all in all, shoe felt really good. Did four easy miles. They get a little bit of speed in there as well. And uh, and they felt really good, really cushioned. Um, really cushioned, they're nice. Walking in them right now, they feel nice and cushioned. You do have to make sure you tighten them down uh, pretty snug. Otherwise, your feet do slip a little bit on the insole. My right shoe is tied perfectly. My left shoe was a little bit loose and I could feel my foot sliding around a little bit. So make sure it's nice and snug to lock it down. Use that runner's knot. Make sure the heel is tied down as well, locked down. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so first impressions is pretty good. Good trainer. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of energy return. I've been running in those Hoka Carbon X running shoes. They have all kinds of energy return. These are not those kind of shoes. These are nice, light training shoes. Uh, so far, I recommend them for medium runs, longer runs. They're nice and cushioned. Uh, again, these are for neutral runners. So if you need arch support of any kind, uh, they don't have any arch support in them, especially with that insole being so flimsy and cheap without any kind of contour to it. So anyway, that's my thoughts on it. The price of these things are about $115, which is in line with most Hoka on a, on a running shoes. So the price is not too high. It's also not cheap. 
So anyway, that's my initial impressions. We're gonna do a lot of runs in these. We're gonna do some speed workouts. We're gonna do some trail runs. We're gonna do some uh, tempo runs, long distance runs as well. And uh, after about 50 miles or so, I'll give my impressions, see how they have uh, you know, worn down over the miles. I'm hoping that that really thin, light, breathable upper does not tear or break down prematurely. So that would be really nice if that didn't happen. Anyway, that's gonna be it for now. If you have the Hoka on a, on a ring cons, let me know what you think. Leave some comments down below. Give me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Until next time, my beard and I say peace.